Most everyday objects in life, such as this desktop laminator, don't come with a set of blueprints. Why would they? They function perfectly fine without the need for equipping the operator with a set of working blueprints. Uh, true for most machines and most things, not true for this laminator. This laminator has a fatal design flaw. See, this being a desktop model, it sits on top of the desk. As a result, there will be a difference in height between the tabletop and the infeed slot. It drags in the paper crooked and it makes crooked laminates. The laminating pouch sheets will slip in relation to the paper because the outside is being stretched and the inside is being compressed and the same crooked direction gets reinforced at the outfit table again because of the difference in height between the outfit slot and the tabletop here. So blueprints could come handy in uh, this scenario uh, but uh, before we get to blueprints of course the obvious solution in the office is grab a binder to make up for this difference in height. It sounds good on paper but uh, binders also have a design or a, a design flaw, yes. They are either too thin or they are too, too thick. None of the binders have the exact thickness to match the height of this infeed table here. Even if they do, even if there was one, or the one that's close enough, because you see it still makes a crooked laminate. It's still, this paper is still drooping and is curved and as, and as, a, resu as a result the lamination will be crooked. Uh, as well the binders taper. They are narrower at the front, thicker at the spine. Now the a binder that matches the height of this would need to be stuffed with the exact same size of sheets of paper inside it to keep the covers parallel with each other. Not happening. Impractical. It still makes crooked sheets. So where the blueprint uh, could come in handy, you see, is at the front here because the front has a curvature. Now there is no functional part inside this curved part because I have taken this machine apart and I have a video about it. You're welcome to look at it. It's cleaning the machine. So there is no functional part here. I could just cut it down straight just like the back side is straight but I don't want to permanently butcher the laminator because it isn't mine. The proper solution is of course to make an outfit table that matches in height and an infeed table that matches in height so where the lamina uh, laminate comes out it comes out without being stressed or, or crooked so because cutting the machine is not an option we need to make a sheet of plywood or an outfit table made of plywood that matches the curvature of the machine now, with that blueprint, it's, uh, it's not a problem, we can do math. So in this video, I know it's a long intro, in this video I'll show you two options that you can do to have this curvature uh, duplicated onto a sheet of plywood. Both approaches start with this. You need to scribe the curvature of the machine on a sheet of paper. The sheet of paper could be this way, it could be this way. I think it's going to be more accurate if it's this way because it's a longer arc. See, this curvature here, in this case, is an arc, part of a circle. Yeah, take a look at it from above here. Part of a circle where the circle is about this big, you know, it's a big circle with the center of the circle being here this would be the radius of the circle there coming to the corner here so we don't know what the radius of the of this curvature is so 
This is an arc, and this needs to be scribed on a sheet of paper. This sheet of paper could be crooked, uh, could be square. It doesn't have to be meticulously square as long as it doesn't slip during the scribing process. So I'm going to hold it just like so. And the pen or pencil that you use for scribing needs to be... It doesn't have to be perpendicular. It could be following the shape, following the shape of the machine this way. But I'll try to keep it perpendicular in this case. And it just needs a single line, just like so. No drama. Now, what we have here is a fantastic curvature or arc. Here is approach one. We can calculate with a straight ruler. You can draw so if this one is the arc part of the circumference come on in closer a little bit let me just lower you with this tripod there if this one is the arc now maybe a little higher oops there something like that yeah that's more like it so if this one is the arc this one is the cord and you need to step one you need to measure the cord measure cord once you have the length of the cord you need to find the halfway point I'm just gonna fake it that it's there so you have to measure the cord and divide hmm, sorry divide by two once you have this halfway point you need a line that's perpendicular to this cord just like so so there's your perpendicular your 90 degree there you need two measurements to make this happen. Measurement one is the depth of the arc. So measure depth of arc. Sorry, in this case it's arch. Well, you have to measure the depth of this arc. Eventually we'll make an arch out of plywood, but this measurement could be measurement A. And then you need half the cord here half the cord will be measurement B and the math that goes with it looks like this to get the radius you have to square the depth of the arc and you have to square half the cord half the cord okay that B is not half the cord only from here to here and then you have to add them together and divide it by twice the depth of the arc. Once you get this calculation done, in this case my A measurement was 12 millimeters and my half the cord was, it's difficult to measure, 139 and a half, maybe 140 millimeters. Repeat it with both numbers, you're gonna get uh, two results of course. And the one of the numbers will be 816.8, the other number will be 823. Now, I'm sure the correct radius is 820 because no engineer or industrial designer designs anything with a radius of 816.8. Or if they do, they should be uh, doing something else for a living. And pretty certain the number that the designer had in mind was 820 not a round number but close enough to round and uh, and this uncertainty comes from the uncertainty in the measurement of length and depth of arch if it's just off a few tenths of a millimeter it, it's, it's affecting the final outcome but 820 is a safe number there for radius so, to produce a sheet of plywood or a piece of plywood that has this curvature on it, you could grab a long piece of plywood, a long piece of stick, find 820 millimeters on it, grab a, grab a sheet of plywood, and with the 820 millimeter radius, reproduce this arc. Now that's option one. Option B does not need any of this calculation. Option B just uses this arch as a, this, uh, this arc that, get, that got copied to produce the 
same arc on a piece of plywood. Once you have the arc copied from the machine or scribed from the machine, just like so, once you have just a single arc on a piece of paper, yeah, I'll just do another one here. What needs to happen is you need, you need your piece of paper, your uh, straight edge there, your piece of plywood that you're going to be cutting. And uh, okay, you do need a piece of ruler here. You need to make a straight line. Although this step could be skipped, you need to make the cord, but you don't have to. And then put the cord to the edge of the plywood there. Come on in closer. There. Line it up there, and of course line it up at the other side as well. Once you have it, cut the piece of paper along the arc. Once you're done with the cutting, of course you're gonna end up with a piece of paper that looks like this. And uh, this is gonna be your off cut, of course. And once you have it, you can you can place you can place a line along the cut piece of paper now on the piece on the piece of plywood and once you have it on the wood you can have a jigsaw on it and just cut it along the pencil line that's exactly what happened there was no calculation done on this here it was just it was just scribed to a single sheet of paper and this arc was cut or along the arc I made a single cut and uh, and then I cut the plywood. End of story. Without any calculation, it's still doing math, but it's not doing any number crunching. The finished product, of course, has the has a height that matches the infeed table, like or the the infeed table matches the height of the uh, infeed slot there. And one more scribing could be done on this box here, around here, to match the shape of the machine here. Now, the paper is, and I don't think I'm going to cut it, but I will show you. Uh, the paper is not drooping enough over this half an inch of horizontal distance to make a, to end up with a crooked product, uh, a crooked laminate. But uh, I'll show you how this could be scribed again. What you need is a compass, just a school compass like this. And you would need to open it so that the pencil lead starts here at the corner. I opened it about two or three times bigger so you can see my hands and see what I'm doing. Because uh, I can't fit the, otherwise I can't fit my hand and compass in front of the lens at the same time. So the needle or the point on the compass is following along the plastic housing there and the pencil side is leaving a mark on the plywood very very straightforward they need to start at the same height because if they are crooked this way or this way it's not good they, this needs to travel uh, level just like so see it's leaving that line there there do notice that the needle point is at the part of the plastic housing that sticks out the furthest forward and at this height when the needle point is at this height the pencil point is also at the same height on the wood see it's further down there of course it's hard to see there Okay, I just made it a little stronger and the same, oops, the lens is in the way and of course the same needs to be continued for the underside just like, just like so. Okay, it's a faint line and the camera is totally in the way because I'm hitting the lens repeatedly but you get the idea, the side of the box can be scribed to duplicate the shape of the machine and it will be, I'm just gonna freehand it now, you're gonna end up with a line that's, the camera is still in the way, that looks somewhat like this, 
and like I said you need to start here because otherwise if you draw a line here like I did you would need to re, re cut it again with the with the jigsaw there unnecessary just place your scribe line here and just notch it up with a jigsaw there and it's gonna be a perfect fit so that's how you can work around with the fact that you don't have a set of blueprints with the machine you can just scribe the real object to the piece of plywood and make it work that way